everyone. This video is going to go over uh, basic techniques for using your pastels and applying our knowledge of color theory and the color wheel to those pastels. Um, and you can also apply this to painting and anything that involves color too. So we'll especially focus on creating neutrals. Um, so neutrals are going to help you create shadows for colorful objects and they're going to especially help you for uh, creating portraits um, because portraits are essentially combinations of um, or variations of all different neutrals. So I'm going to focus on uh, showing you different uh, neutrals created by combinations of complementary colors. Um, and then we're also going to talk about layering the pastels and um, putting some different sort of drawing techniques and applications in there. So blending, scumbling, hatching, etc. Um, before we get into that, let's do a quick review on the color wheel and color theory. Here we have a clearly labeled standard color wheel. The primary colors are colors that cannot be mixed from any other color. They include red, yellow, and blue. Secondary colors are combinations of two primaries. These include orange, green, and purple. Intermediate colors, also known as tertiaries, are combinations of a secondary color and a primary color, resulting in colors like red-orange, blue-violet, etc. The color wheel is a way to visually organize all of these colors together and to understand their relationships. A color wheel allows us to clearly see complementary color combinations. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite of one another on the color wheel. They also feel like they're opposite when you see them together. Red and green is an example of a complementary color combination. If I put a red next to a green, it's going to look extra red. Many artists incorporate complementary color schemes into their work. For example, this Van Gogh painting self-portrait as a painter, which uses the complementary color scheme of blue and orange. Here's another example from Frida Kahlo. In this painting, self-portrait with monkey, which utilizes red and green. Standard complementary color combinations include red and green, blue and orange, and yellow and purple. When you combine complementary colors together, you will create a neutral or a type of brown. This knowledge is incredibly helpful for mixing shadows and for mixing a variety of skin tones. You can also use this knowledge like Kahlo and Van Gogh to set up a great color scheme for your work. All right, everyone, this demo is going to be on using your chalk pastels and applying the color theory um, that we learned, uh, that we learned about in our understanding of the color wheel and using that to create neutrals, which you then can use for a variety of things. Also, my cat will be meowing in the background because she wants to go outside, and I'm not letting her. Okay, um, anyway, so let's start off with primaries. So the primary colors are colors that you cannot mix from other colors. Um, so you just have to have these colors. Now it's going to be red, okay, red, yellow, and blue. <laughs> okay, and in theory, you can mix um, almost any other color just from those primaries. Now, of course, you can take a yellow and a blue and create green, right? But if you just have this combination of yellow and blue, you're not going to be able to achieve this kind of tealy green like this. Not really, not quite like that. So there's going to be versions of green, orange, and purple that you really can't quite mix from these primaries. You just need a particular pigment. Um, but nevertheless, the primaries are... A great you can mix a great many things just from these three colors okay um, what we're also going to be talking about in this demo is comparing and contrasting white paper so a white surface with a mid-tone surface um, so this is our gray paper 
one isn't necessarily better than the other, they just have different effects. So we're going to put both of these things on each piece of paper and you will see that they register to the eye in different ways. Okay. Um, all right, so let's talk about why that is. So this, this paper is a neutral mid-tone gray, so it's like the middle of our value scale, which means that a light color like yellow is really going to read as light because there's that mid-tone underneath it, right? Versus our white paper, the white is this, the paper itself is a brilliant white, which means that our light values that we're applying are going to read as darker than they actually are. So the yellow is a good example of that. Um, so if you're just comparing and contrasting these yellows, they register in different ways. So what that's going to mean is if you're using a white surface, if you're trying to create lights, so let's add a white pastel. You can see it's also kind of bluish. But if I add that to this gray paper, very different effect, right? So if I wanted this to read as white on a drawing on a white piece of paper, all of the white of the paper would need to be covered for that to happen. So that's just something to keep in mind. Again, one isn't necessarily better than the other. You're going to find that you might have a preference. For me, I personally love working on a toned paper. Okay, so let's talk about neutrals. Neutrals, um, once you understand neutrals, it's um, a really kind of empowering knowledge, especially if you're applying it to portraiture. So neutrals are going to be colors that are not saturated. It's the opposite of saturated. It's the opposite of chromatic. So these are very chromatic, bright, saturated colors, right? Neutrals are going to be your blacks, browns, and grays. Um, but we're not going to be creating these grays with just black and white. Rather, we're going to be combining complementary colors. So complementary colors are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Um, so let's take that and combine these ideas together. So I'm going to make versions of warm and cool neutrals with different complementary color combinations. I'll begin with red and green. Okay. And then we're going to try these neutrals on both pieces of paper. So red and green. Um, so again, they're complementary colors. That means they're opposite of one another on the color wheel. Um, so red is very warm. Green is cooler. It has blue and yellow in it. Um, and so we're going to combine these together, and it's going to make a type of brown. But what's interesting is you can t push this brown uh, either a little bit more red or a little bit more green, and you can then use that to create um, some really great tones f and hues for your portraits. So we'll start with a red combination. Okay, and I have this kind of neutral green. And I'm also going to layer a little bit of this teal to balance out that neutral green. Now, if your colors don't look exactly the same as mine, that's fine. The, the color theory principles I'm discussing here on how you combine neutrals with complementary colors, that is going to remain the same. So even if your red and green looks slightly different, don't worry. Okay, so I'll start by making a warmer one. So you can see this makes a warm brown. This knowledge of color theory and the color wheel is going to greatly expand your idea of what brown is. So you might just think of brown like this, which is sort of a burnt umber, but you can create all of your own browns, push it and pull it different ways towards different colors to get exactly what you want. When you're looking at skin tone, for example, it's just going to be a variety of all these different neutrals that you can push and pull different ways. So what I'm also going to do is show you how when you add white, we'll do a kind of gradient. So I'm going to add some white, and this is going to give us some lighter skin tones. Okay. 
there's one stay again. All right. So this can kind of be a reddish, um, sort of blushing skin tone. Now we'll do one where we push it a little bit more towards green. All right. So I am put some red down, and I'm going to add more of my green, more of my cool color into this version of this neutral. Let's add a little bit more green. That's my cat trying to escape. It's not happening. All right, so even a little bit more green. Okay, so now I've made uh, another version of this neutral using the same colors but just adding more of my cool color, in this case, the green, and it creates a different type of effect. All right, let's add some white into that. And we're just making a nice little gradient. Okay, so um, you can see with both of these neutral combinations and the gradient, these neutrals, where it's just the red and the green combined together, those could address some shadow areas. Whereas as we go, if you start adding white into it, that can start to address the light. Okay, and now let's also go over to our gray paper. You're gonna see with the gray paper, when I start adding white to something, it really pops, which is fun um, as you draw to see that happening. Okay, so red and green. Add a little bit of that teal and then some of the neutral green. Now I'm doing that because I didn't have just a kind of pure green in my set. You probably do. So you're not gonna have to do something like that. If you have a nice green, just use that. But again, either way, the, the sort of color theory is remaining constant for adding red and green together whatever sort of combination of red and green that is, those are complementary colors and that's going to make a neutral for us to use. All right, let's add some white into that. So see how that white pops. So the surface that you are drawing or even if you're painting on, the surface makes a big difference. So if you're deciding to tone, work on a tone surface, or if you're toning a canvas, that's going to impact how the colors and values that you're putting on top of it read. This reads as lighter instantaneously because of the midtone of the paper. Whereas this will have to cover more of the paper for that to read as a true light. Okay, now let's make a cooler version. So, more green in there. And then you can adjust these things as much as you want to. So you can make it a little bit more chromatic if you wanted to. So say you want this to be even a little bit more red, you could do that. And that could give you some nice, um, nice ways of addressing, for example, the cheeks, the nose, the ears, those tend to go quite red. All right, so red and green, so that is one complementary color combination. The next complementary color combination we'll talk about is going to be blue and orange. So again, these are colors that are opposite of one another. So blue is very cool, orange is warm. When you combine them together, they're going to make a type of brown. So we'll start with a uh, neutral that has more blue in it. So I'm just going to add a bit of this orange to neutralize it. Let's do a little bit more. Do a little gradient.
Okay, a little bit more blue, because I want this to be a cooler neutral on the side. Okay, and now we'll add white on the bottom. So you can kind of see how this applies to a portrait. So as you're looking at your portraits, start to really look at those different colors that you're seeing and ask yourself what color it might be leaning towards. So it's not going to be just a brown. Is it a brown that's leaning towards red or green or blue or orange? There's so many different varieties. So you want to start to really actively look and then you can make your mixing decision from there. Okay, so this is going to be the warmer version. Let's add a little bit more blue to neutralize that a little bit. Okay, I want to show you another application for an understanding of neutrals. So oftentimes, um, say if you're uh, drawing or painting a colorful object, so let's say that we're drawing a, a colorful orange sphere, and it is being lit from over here, okay? Well, in the light areas where it's being hit by the light, generally the light is going to be more chromatic. So it's going to be more of a, um, an intense color. You'll see the local color. So that's the, the actual color of the object, okay? The true color of the object. All right. And then in the shadow areas, generally, it's going to be obviously darker, but also more neutral. So what we can do to create the shadow for this orange sphere that we're working with is actually take, put down a layer of blue and then layer orange on top of that. And that's going to give us a neutralized orange and a darker orange, and it will read as a shadow. So creating shadows for colorful objects, you're going to think directly of uh, sort of color theory principles and the color wheel and using complementary colors to create shadows. Okay, blend that together. So that is giving us a neutralized orange. I can go in and create a darker kind of core shadow. and then let's say maybe a highlight all right so this little sphere is just an example of applying this these ideas from color theory directly to um, drawing a colorful object so you can even keep this in mind for your portraits so for example, in my own portrait, I was primarily using a combination of yellow and purple neutrals to create the skin tones. So the shadows were leaning more towards purple and the light was leaning more towards yellow. And okay, so let's take, we're gonna take, to put down a little bit of this purple first. Okay, I'm going to layer more yellow on top. 
top of this because I'll make this the warmer neutral. Okay, then let's combine that together. And also you can see here I'm just blending with my finger. That's fine. You want to make sure obviously that your fingers are not greasy or anything. Um, or you can use your chamois, a blending stump, a paper towel. Um, if you're using a chamois or a blending stump, that can just be your pastel chamois or blending stump. So obviously it's going to get really coated in color. Okay, and I'm making a cooler version of the same neutral, add in a little bit of yellow here. some white. Alright, so you can see that we have essentially these different browns with uh, value scales kind of applied to each of them going from light to dark. Um, they're all combinations of different complementary colors. They're all variations of brown and these are all neutrals that you could be applying towards skin tones because skin tones are essentially neutrals. Uh, you might have different values that you're, de you're dealing with and you might want to push your neutrals towards different colors. Um, that's going to depend on the decisions that you're making for your piece. So for example if you're wanting to make the majority of your piece uh, yellow and purple, you could have areas of really chromatic yellow and purple, and then you could also have these neutrals throughout the skin. Another consideration, <laughs> another consideration for all of you is you're layering down all these colors, and then you want to think about how you're applying the pastel as well. So it can be blended, but also see where you can have areas where you're going over and making marks. So that could be hatching, you could be scumbling, so scumbling the light can be really nice, for example. So you can really see that on the gray paper too, you can see how that scumble really shows up. Okay, um, you could be hatching, cross hatching. Stippling with pastel would be a little insane, you could try that I suppose. Um, but think about your creating layers and you don't want to just blend everything out. You want a variety of applications. Okay, everyone. So take this knowledge from the color wheel and from color theory and bring it into your own pieces and make some informed decisions about what you want to do with color.